Well, hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to be outlining uh, my case for why I think it is time to rebrand for us to become the sensible center. Now, over the past few years, I think a lot of us have been on uh, an intellectual journey of discovery, figuring out uh, exactly what we think on many different things. And we have done that under the rubric uh, or under the label of dissident right. But the time has come for us to uh, put that label away for various reasons while retaining all of the things that we've learned and presenting those ideas uh, in a different way, a way I'm calling the sensible center. Now, for those of you who are new to this channel, um, the quickest way to catch up uh, with, you know, some of these uh, ideas I'm talking about is to go to my Substack, the Forbidden Text. Um, I recently put out an article called 59 Theses, uh, which summarizes many of the lessons um, that I have gone through, you know, in some detail over the past several years on this channel. Um, in my book, The Populist Delusion, uh, in essays on my Substack and elsewhere. Now, back in August, I gave a talk called The Octopus, um, where the situation was looking pretty bleak uh, because we had no institutions whatsoever on our side. The regime, as we tend to uh, call the status quo or the powers that be, uh, essentially control every single institutional castle on the map. However, all of that changed just a couple of weeks ago when Elon Musk finally completed his takeover of Twitter and then moved with a swiftness and rapidity that I think has shocked many of us to essentially capture uh, this juvenilian castle on the map, namely Twitter, the most important and influential of the social media sites. We've always had a decent presence here on YouTube, but there's something about Twitter that uh, gives it an extra special mimetic power, uh, especially because, you know, uh, anyone who is anyone is on Twitter, um, where, whereas YouTube is a, is a slightly different experience. Um, and this uh, capture, even though it seem, may seem quite small, that uh, Elon Musk has taken this castle, uh, represents an opportunity for us that did not exist uh, a few months back. In August, when I wrote uh, this speech, Twitter um, is one of many uh, different nodes of opinion formation that exist uh, in our society, but arguably it has become uh, the most immediate and the most influential of all of those nodes. Obviously the um, traditional media is still there and YouTube, as I've mentioned, certainly helps push things one way or the other. But Twitter really, uh, you could argue, uh, was the platform that helped John Donald Trump uh, win the 2016 election. In fact, if he had not been on Twitter, one might argue whether he would have even run at all uh, back in 2015. So for Musk to level the playing field and to give us this platform back represents an opportunity for us to, you know, set a tempo in the discourse, especially as uh, the so-called blue check marks, the liberal elites, the spokespeople for the regime are no longer going to get the artificial legs up uh, that they used to have. Now, I also want to learn some of the lessons of what has gone wrong in the past and also look at uh, people who have been successful in changing things, um, even though they've changed things in a direction that we did not like. For, so, for example, this sensible centre strategy uh, was used to very good effect uh, in the late 90s and in the 2000s by Tony Blair. Uh, in this country. Now, of course, we don't like a lot of the changes that Tony Blair made, and, uh, you know, he's not on our side, but 
essentially this was the tactic that he used. He, he managed to frame his opponents as extremists and to frame himself as the sensible guy in the room. Whereas, in fact, as we all know, Tony Blair uh, was extremely radical, uh, left-wing uh, liberal, and, uh, you know, this was just a frame game that he was playing. In fact, as we'll see, um, Tony Blair and his ilk have always been the extremists, and people like us who disagree with them uh, are now and have always been the sensible centre. This all started uh, on Twitter uh, just a couple of days ago um, when Sargon of Akkad, my buddy Carl Benjamin, came back. And, you know, we use Twitter. One of the things that people don't understand, uh, I guess, especially those of you who only watch videos on YouTube or come to our streams and things like that, is that Twitter tends to be the space where we hash out a lot of ideas, you know, in rough form or, you know, we kind of bounce things around. And then, you know, videos like this help cement it a little bit more. Uh, essays and books are the kind of final form. So there's a process uh, that comes. So we're very much in the early stages here. But I wanted to uh, make this video to explain, really, uh, what uh, I am trying to do, what Carl is trying to do. As I've said here, the dissident right is, ter is terrible branding. We must become the sensible centre. In fact, we already are the sensible centre. Now, I'm going to talk you through a series of these tweets that, uh, that I've made so you get the basic idea. So if you're not on Twitter, you can understand the sort of thing we've been doing for the past couple of days. And, um, you know, over the next year or so, uh, I see things going more in this direction. And certainly I will put my efforts towards, um, you know, making this a, a kind of permanent change in the way that we present our ideas in the way that we go about what we're doing. And there's all sorts of reasons why. If you stick with me right till the end of the video, I will explain what they are. So I said, I am abandoning the term postmodern traditionist to embrace instead moderate centrist. Uh, that is since I kind of gone with sensible center instead, which I think is um, better branding in a way because it's, you know, it has, um, what they call consonants. That's the sus, sus sound, sensible center. Um, and I think moderate um, has, moderate suggests that you're moderating your views or kind of sacrificing some of your um, principles in a way. And we're not doing that. We are just presenting things that we believe in a different way, okay? I said to be a postmodern in 2022 is a moderate view and to be against wokeness for immigration restriction against democracy and so on defines the center. And now when we started bouncing this around, um, Dev, who is uh, Carl's buddy, uh, you know, he piped up and said, there's no way that you lads are centrist, to which I immediately replied, you're just extremely liberal and that's OK but actually my views define the center. And that is always how you must think about this. We represent the center. Someone like Dev and his views represent extreme outliers. And I have data to show you how that is in fact the case. Uh, I'll show you that in a moment. Uh, somebody uh, else piped up, uh, this chap Richard Madden, he said, centrism is essentially globalist liberalism. I said, no, this is very wrong. Globalist liberalism is an extremist doctrine, alien to 99% of people anywhere. By any definition, it is far left. You must fully understand the extent of their extremism. We are the centre. And if you really want to understand uh, the extent of their extremism, I, I spoke with a psychologist earlier this week called Josh Neal. Um, I think it's Cigar Stream episode 155. Uh, he wrote a book called American Extremist, um, where he explores uh, the extent to which this is actually true, that the, you know, that the liberals and the far left are the extremists, and the rest of us are, by any definition in any era really, do define the moral majority and the centre of the society. We need to take the centre back from uh, people who have gaslit you 
and gaslit us uh, over the past several years. Here's Carl himself. Uh, he put out this uh, tweet. Now, obviously, Carl has a huge account, a lot of engagement. Um, he said, sensible centrism is reducing legal and illegal immigration to zero, abolishing hate speech laws, maintaining national sovereignty, purging wokeness from institutions, restoring the death penalty for severe crimes, promoting family values and reducing the welfare state. And uh, I, I will show you soon just how correct he is that those views there, which a lot of people might think, oh, no, this is right wing or this is a kind of even far right. Uh, no, it's not. This is what most people believe in most countries, especially here in the UK and in America. Um, there is a, a lot of data to say that uh, all of these positions that Carl has outlined here are what the vast majority of people believe. And I just uh, have a few um, other tweets here where I show the framing, the correct framing that we need to embody uh, going forward. So extreme, we need to import 480,000 foreign students into our universities to keep them afloat. Sensible center, university rec recruitment should be set by total demand for graduates. When 47% of graduates are in jobs that don't require degrees, we have too many students. And you can see that the establishment position is actually the extreme one. And our view is the sensible one. And it must always be framed in that way, regardless of what the issue is. And I have several ex other examples here. Extreme. There's a job shortage, so we need to import hundreds of thousands of people into the country and surrender our towns and cities to foreigners. Obviously an extreme view. I mean, not just on an historical scale, but also up until extremely recently, that was an extreme view here. No, if, if, if you'd said this sort of thing in, even in the middle of the Blair years, in like 2002 or something, um, people would not have gone along with uh, this idea and they would have thought that you were an extremist. Um, the sensible centre view is power is with labour. Let the wage rate rise. Do not let companies fob us off with the race to be the cheapest. And, you know, this is a, the sort of view that Jeremy Corbyn supporters may also have or uh, union trade union bosses, for example, may very well uh, adopt a view like that. Extreme. Women can have penises. Men can need tampons. Sensible centre? No. And again, whichever way you look at it, the vast majority of people don't believe in the extreme position. They believe in the sensible one. That is why we embody and represent the centre. Extreme. We need to ignore the highest crime rates and murder rates in London on record to concentrate on the real problems, racism in the police. Sensible centre. We need to be tough on crime, tough on the causes of crime. Extreme. We need to run a massive managerial apparatus involving every single institution and staff overheads costing billions of dollars to protect the feelings of a small minority of people and ensure they don't feel offended. Sensible centre. No, we don't. Elon Musk, just in the past couple of weeks, has shown us. We don't need that. All of that apparatus was a waste of money. No, Twitter is now under his control and nobody has been affected. At all. So it is obviously the sensible view that we don't need any of that crap. Extreme. We need to keep immigration high because we can't fill all the jobs. Sensible centre. If you eliminated all the unproductive jobs, as Elon Musk did at Twitter, you'd open up a native labour supply to be reallocated to more productive ends. Extreme. Every person, no matter their interest or knowledge or productive input to society, should have a say in its running. Sensible centre. Obviously that's insane. And besides, Every political party is an organised minority 
whose interests prevail over the disorganised mass. Extreme. There's no such thing as indigenous Britons. Sensible centre. Yes, there is. They are people who have lived on this island for hundreds, I should have said thousands, of years and who are recognised the world over. So with each of these you can see the framing uh, puts the, uh, the Liberal uh, on the foot of having an untenably extreme position and it brings back the forces of common sense. Um, it, it just kind of gives us the moral centre ground which we do in fact have. Uh, don't forget they are the ones who are suggesting absurd things in, ma in many cases um, which must be rejected by all right-thinking sensible people. You can apply this to other things as well like for example my buddy Dave the distributist recently grew a moustache and now an extremist would say keep it but of course the sensible centre would recommend that he should shave it off. Now just to show the power of this meme. Uh, strangely, literally less than 24 hours after me and Carl started tweeting in this way, Elon Musk put out this tweet. He said, but freedom of speech is the bedrock of a strong democracy and must take precedence. My preference for the 2024 presidency is someone sensible and centrist. I had hoped that would uh, be the case for the Biden administration but have been disappointed so far. So you can see now Elon Musk, the richest man in the world and someone who obviously wields a lot of power, he is also using this frame of the sensible center. And if you have a look uh, earlier on today, the Washington Post put out this story that billionaire Twitter owner Elon Musk said he would back Florida governor Ron DeSantis if he runs for president in 2024, tweeting into the night on Friday Musk described DeSantis as a sensible and centrist choice. And if you go through each of the tweets I made uh, about what is extreme and what is sensible, uh, if Ron DeSantis was sitting here with me, or if indeed if Elon Musk was sitting here with me, they would, you know, maybe one or two, they may raise an eyebrow, but I reckon that in almost every single case, they would agree that those are sensible centrist positions as against extreme uh, liberal Antifa types who've taken over our institutions. So for all of these reasons, I'm saying we need to get rid of dissident right and we need to embrace the sensible center. Now, what is the case for the sensible center? Well, there's really four things that I will point to. First of all, it is a more honest framing of uh, of the current debate. It is it is more reflective of what is actually going on, which is a set of extremists are trying to change society in a direction that most people don't want it, and they're calling anybody who disagrees with them extremists. Whereas in fact they are the ones who are extremists. They are the ones who are uh, trying to. Uh, radically uh, alter uh, the way people live against the wills uh, of those people. Uh, so, you know, and they have, it's their job to convince us of their opinion. They have failed to do that. Uh, and given that we embody the centre, we are the ones who get to dictate uh, who is extreme and who isn't. Secondly, it puts pressure on the left to show that they are not extremists. Um, something that I think, again, Elon Musk has done very well. Um, third, it will attract a higher quality of person. I'll get into that in a moment. And finally, it is more likely to achieve real world uh, results. Now, first thing to remember is the extreme liberal gaslight that has taken place through our media over the past uh, 10 to 20 years. Um, I will always use this example of Peter Hitchens on uh, Newsnight. You can see there's a panel of five people there, uh, of which Peter Hitchens uh, represents just one, uh, just one person, one fifth of the panel. And 
every time Peter Hitchens would go on YouTube, uh, would go on Question Time, uh, the issue of immigration would come up, and Peter Hitchens would voice some very, very sensible centrist takes on what the limits of immigration should be, and um, you know that uh, really there are too many people here that we don't need to have these ridiculous open border policies. And the his fellow panellists, including the likes of uh, Justine Greening, as you can see her there, who was meant to be a Tory MP, but in fact was uh, an extremist liberal in disguise of a, as a Conservative, Will Self, the smug, uh, grinning, uh, long-winded author there, um, whoever the Labour person was, and usually they'd stick on um, uh, a, a Lib Dem there as well, who of course is another uh, extreme uh, liberal. And what they would do on um, Question Time is when Peter Hitchens would voice his uh, opinion on immigration, the other four panellists would kick into gear in condemnation of Hitchens to a braying and booing audience. So the little old lady who's sitting at home, who probably agrees with Peter Hitchens, um, was made to feel that sh her view was in the small minority and that the um, the views of the of the other four panellists were the majority in the the audience the audience in the studio represented the majority whereas the truth is and again we have data on this in the british social attitude survey that uh more than 60 percent of the british public have agreed with peter hitchens uh on this issue going right the way back at no time you know there's a reason why people use the phrase we were never asked uh and that is because uh hitchens does represent the sensible centre on this topic. Uh, it is just that the extremists have taken over the institutions. So that is the liberal gaslight. The reality of the sensible centre, however, is that uh, Tory MPs, Conservative MPs, like, like the likes of a Justin Greening that we saw there, or David Cameron, or Boris Johnson, or any, any of these sorts of people, or, or Rishi Sunak, who's the Prime Minister now, are very are far to the left of where all voters are you can see that all voters are to the right of the conservatives on social issues and another marker we could use for the reality of the sensible center is the state of florida which back in 2000 uh, if you remember was the state that the bush versus gore uh, election was held up on Florida has always been um, a state that kind of takes the pulse of the nation in, in America, a swing state. Uh, now that state, solidly, by 60%, that's a, that's a majority of more than 20%, uh, goes for the sensible centrist candidate, Ron DeSantis, uh, who, I mean, what has Ron DeSantis done? He, you know, he ran on a stop woke platform. He ran on a platform to an anti-groomer bill uh, he, he was the one who uh, took on uh, the Walt Disney Company for, for pushing the child sex stuff um, you know he's taken a firm stance on immigration he has basically agreed with let's say 80 90 percent of the things uh, that I have outlined so far and he's put them into action uh, as the governor of Florida and you can see the results there this is the same state don't forget that was voting 50 50 for democrats just just a few years ago so it's not that the state of florida has um you know quote unquote moved to the right it is that the democrat party have just become more and more extreme liberals and so a sensible centrist candidate like ron DeSantis is going to you know smash his opponent uh, as he has done here so that is the reality of the sensible center against the gaslight. Now, in a backdrop where this is the reality, do you want to brand yourself as the dissident right? Now, what happens when you call yourself a dissident right? What sort of people do you attract um, as opposed to when you call yourself the sensible center? You know, on the dissident right, uh, you'll get an individual who looks like this guy on the left here who's disaffected. 
He has learned helplessness. He's uh, prone to unrealistic fantasy, um, you know, adopting rigid ideologies, purity spiraling. Uh, yeah, he looks extreme to outsiders. It's very unattractive and, um, you know, produces somebody like this. Now, that is not that is not a positive frame for change in the direction that we want. Instead, we want somebody much more like the fellow on the right here who embodies the sensible center. He's successful. He embodies will to power. He seeks he seeks realistic and achievable outcomes, not unrealistic fantasies that are never going to happen. And he is pragmatic as opposed to being ideological and rigid because he's seeking real world results. He's not thinking about pie in the sky nonsense. Um, and finally, outsiders want to be him. The chap on the left here is repellent. Okay, to the lizard brain, to any other person, he is repellent. You don't want to be like this guy. Whereas the guy on the right, he's everything that other people want to be. So it's attractive to embody this frame of the sensible centre. Now, note, none of the issues have changed. None of the way that we are, um, none of the things that we're actually advocating have changed. It is simply the presentation and the framing of those ideas uh, that I'm talking about here, but that has real uh, consequences for the sorts of people uh, who, you know, might be attracted to it. Um, if you call yourself dissident, you're going to get these terminally online people who just revel in being against the system. You know, um, they they kind of embody this um, frame of the perpetual malcontent um, and th there's nothing you can do with them with with somebody like that you can't uh, if somebody is simply a malcontent uh, or a disaffected youth um, I mean you know back in my day you might just say well that's just a loser that's just you know you can't do anything with that you need people who are serious you need people who um, ha have achieved things and who want to achieve things in the future, uh, people who are already have jobs in the professions, doctors, lawyers, you name it. Um, these are the sorts of people, ideally, who we want to be getting uh, on side now, especially as, as I mentioned, the richest man in the world, the most successful man in the world, you might say, also is on our side. So this should be an aspirational thing um, to join us. We are on the side of the we are on the side of positive change for the sensible center and um, there's something else that happens as well with the framing of these issues because I think the very phrase dissident right um, kind of puts everybody in this competition for everyone to be quote unquote more base than everyone else you know you get these uh, ridiculous purity spirals where everybody's trying to be more base than everyone else you know it's not just enough to um, you know, talk about uh, uh, the differences between the two genders or some of the problems with um, w women's rights or votes for women. You know, it, it, you, you then need to go, you know, a step further and a step further and a step further. And this is how you end up with things like white Sharia and, and things like this. Things that, frankly, are never, ever going to happen in a million years. Um, or you, you get, uh, you know, you get the perpetual oh, everything went wrong in the French Revolution. No, we need to go back to Cromwell. No, we need to go back to 1381 and all this sort of stuff. Um, I mean, OK, it's an interesting academic argument, but ultimately it's unproductive and it leads to uh, what I would describe as low quality uh, across the board. It, it leads to... Uh, it kind of encourages... Um, uh, it encourages a spiral in, in, in a wrong direction, I would say. Um, and that puts off people with the talent and the skills uh, that could really help us going forward. The sensible centre, uh, as a frame and as a label, in comparison, leads to a different type of competition where everybody is striving to be more sensible than everyone else, which will lead to 
high quality individuals, productive framing for the issues, and it should attract people with talent and skill over to our side. Now, of course, they go newcomers are still going to have to learn all of the all of the stuff I was talking to, uh, about before. Um, they can't just like come in and inhabit their old you know, extreme liberal beliefs. There needs to be a, a program of making people more and more sensible. Um, and if you're one of those people, I would encourage you to go through my back catalogue or uh, read the entirety of my substack or my book, The Populist Illusion. But um, yes, going forward, I think this is the best course of action. And uh, it should, I think, I'm hopeful, will produce change in the direction that we want it. It won't give us everything that we want overnight, because of course that is an unrealistic fantasy, especially considering where we're starting from. But I think, looking at what has happened in the past couple of weeks, looking at the map, this is a sensible way forward. So hope you're going to join us for that. Still got my a sale going on at the academic agency up until the end of this month promo code merit that will get you 25 percent off all the courses join the channel uh, read the substack that i've mentioned and subscribe to that i'm trying to put out more free articles to that uh, as well as paid uh, content on there and uh tell me what you think now get out